I say they wore that pin and bushing out pretty good. Huh? What's up, YouTube? It's Melon Bell Anthony here with another one for you. And today, well, you might recognize this machine because I replaced the pins and bushings on it about eight, nine months ago. Well, apparently these guys don't use grease. So basically this pin and these bushings this time on the inside and pins have worn out. Last time I replaced these bushings on the outside, but this time, replacing the ones that actually go through the loader arm. So, cut them out and replace them it is. I say they wore that pin and bushing out pretty good, huh? Grease. Grease your shit. We got a little unexpected problem here. Something appears to be bent on the dog bone because if you look, even with it out of the machine, it's not, it won't straighten out no matter what I do. I don't know. I have to get it apart to see. It's not even budging. I really need to take a look at this and figure out what the fuck is getting bound up. There we go, Hot sucker. So I'm gonna go up to the office and tell them that we need to get the bushings for the dog bone on this thing. So I called the Kubota dealership. They'll have me one on Friday. Um, everything's super fucking expensive. For all these parts, it was like $350. I'll cut these bad boys out, put the new ones in. And then Friday I'll come, put everything back together, grease it up and uh, hopefully make it like new. biting anymore because the flame kept kind of trying to twerk and threat it was threatening to go inside of the uh it's into the arm and uh, i don't want that so what i'm going to do is go ahead and just 
knock all the slag off of this and then finish this thing up with a grinder. All right guys, so I did a decent job cleaning it up. I did bite into the metal a little bit right there with the torch, that's why I don't like to get too close with it because sometimes if you shake your hand just a little bit, you end up biting into the parent metal. Not a big deal, it's just metal. I'll grind it out and then I'll weld it up when I go ahead and put the new bosses in. I can't find the line. This happens. So what I did was I just aligned one of the bushings. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out with the torch when I come back. And I'm gonna go ahead and slide the boss through. It'll probably be, you know, it'll move on all dimensions and I'll use Quick Connect as my guide. I'll use this to square the bosses in the arms of the loader. Friday, my parts will come in to finish this thing up and then I'll come back out here and do just that. All right, guys, it's two days later. Kubota called me this morning, so they had my parts. We're gonna go in there, grab those, and then head over to the customer and finish them up. I'd like to have one of those. That's for sure. Enclosed cab, that'd be nice. So here's the problem we're running into this morning. As you can see, there's a little light through there. So I asked the customer what he wanted to do about that. The dog bone is cast steel, can be welded. Um, he said to me, he doesn't want to spend the money on the dog bone. So he said to me, can we doctor it up a little bit? I said, yeah, why not? So what I'm going to do is try to fill those gaps in between the, uh, the bushing and the dog bone with a couple of passes of 7018 after I preheat. I'm going to let the bushing sit in the freezer that's over here and let it shrink down. And then hopefully I'm accurate enough to where I can just tap that bad boy in, but I'm probably going to have to do a little grinding in there. So wish me luck. So here's the plan. I'm gonna go ahead and try to run some passes with some 332nd 7018. I'm not gonna lie, this 7018's been around for about three months. So I'm gonna take the, the torch to it and just kind of heat it up a little bit. And I, it's not a rod of them, but you know, maybe I'll be able to get some of the moisture out of these bad boys. So I'm sure there's a little bit in there. So we're getting close. I just need to do some more build up passes just in the middle. This is how you heat your lunch up in the field. I'm going to start by preheating the piece because we're dealing with one inch uh, steel. So I'm going to use this light stand as a rest so that way I'm not trying to hold the torch up and cut. Uh, and I'm going to do my best to keep it straight as I can. There's no getting this perfect though. Um, unless I was a machine, I ain't. So let's give it our best shot. The good news is, is I found the line. So if you look in there, you can see that. That's where originally the boss went through and they welded it. So there's the line right there. And then on this side, we found it as well. So that's good news. Um, I was a little nervous about doing that. I definitely hacked the fuck out of it. Um, definitely not my best cutting work, but we found the line inside the boss, where the boss was originally welded in. So I should be able to just kind of ease the torch around that and continue to find the line. Maybe even bevel it out and it'll just kind of peel itself away. I don't know, but I'm gonna try my best. Okay, so that was a bit of luck. Um, 
but you can see where it looks like it's you know perfectly round all the way on the inside I only overcut a little bit right here it's not too big of a deal that's kind of the spot I mean if you're gonna overcut that's the spot I would want it to be but um yep we found the original line and we're gonna be able to get the boss in exactly where it was what you see me doing is using a caliper to try to align the other side with the side that I've already cut to try to get this thing in as accurately as I can. I'm touching my marks all the way around, so I'm gonna go ahead and trace this thing out, and uh, that should be dead on with the other one. I hope. So after I trace it out with a Sharpie, I just threw a little thermal paint on there. It'll hang on a little longer than that Sharpie will when I get to cut in this thing. But I'm gonna get, take a second, keep my gross, uh, frozen pizza that has been reheated and reheated again and then I'm gonna come back cut this one out hopefully I get it straight and dead on and we uh, are able to find the uh, line inside like we did on the other one all right so good news I was able to wash this one uh, just inside the lines just like I did the last one Nice uh, smooth part is where the bushing was, or the uh, boss was originally in there. You see, I washed around it pretty well. I dug in a little bit right here, but no big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and die grind the rest of this out, and then uh, hopefully just slip those bushings right in and then be done. perfect but it's probably only off by like a 16th and that's like I said where I blew back just past the bushing right in here it's not a big deal it's just metal though we'll fill that in with 7018 when we go ahead and weld this up once we uh, get it centered inside of our uh, quick connect that we're going to use to jig now I just need to clean up the dog bone and get the bushing back in it This part actually took me several hours. I felt like Pakistani truck grinding this thing out for hours on end, but it is what it is. All right, guys, I've got it all cleaned up. It's not perfect, but I did it by hand with a fucking die grinder, so it's as good as it gets. So as you can see, it's got some uh, looseness to it still. It's not perfect. Yeah, now, nowadays it's a little, oh yeah, baby's going right in there. Come on, baby. All right, guys, so I finally got that fucking bushing back in. Um, I got it in, it's nice and tight, and I buried it in sand. I might as well let it cool slow, and I'm gonna let it sit down there, cool down slow, and then I'll pull it out and reassemble that portion. But now, finally, that was like fucking six hours of grinding. Uh, I didn't wanna bore you guys with that. Um, I can slam the bushings in here, and then go ahead, use the uh, quick connect as a jig, and hopefully line everything up and get the fuck out of here. Dead on, they're both 5.5. These arms are perfect as fuck, but... 
So the problem is most everything on this machine is crooked. If you look straight in front of you, you can see that the uh, holder for the dog bone is crooked. The dog bone was twisted like I showed you earlier. And also uh, both of the arms are twisted. Okay, so here's the situation. That arm is twisted as fuck. There's not much I can do about it. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and try to twist that motherfucker back. I've done it once. So what I'm gonna do, I tack welded the fucking bushings on. Everything seems to work fine. I'm not hearing any creaking or popping. I only put four little tack welds on and if they didn't pop with me moving that thing, they shouldn't pop when I fucking weld it around and hopefully they're straight. There's all sorts of fuck ups going on. They didn't give me the right shims for the, uh, for the dog bone bushing, but this, this is the type of bullshit you run into when you, when you start replacing shit like this. This machine is just been used and abused. They told me they've been using a bucket that's one yard bigger than they should be, and if you know fucking dirt, you know an extra yard is a lot for a little machine like this. So I'm gonna pop the quick connect off, and I'm gonna weld these fucking bushings out, call it good. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for. I'm gonna go ahead and preheat this shit and then weld it in. Like I said, this fucking arm is twisted like this and then this is twisted. So two fucking twists to make a straight, I don't fucking know. But I'm gonna tell you what, I, I can't bend this shit back. Everything lines up, it all articulates right, it's not stressing anywhere, I'm not hearing any creaking. There was no grease in it. So you would hear fucking creaking if something was misaligned with itself. So it should be fine. Good. Well, hell yeah, guys. Came out fucking excellent. It looks perfect. I mean, it's, you know, no undercut. There's no defects. Um, it looks real good. So, the customer should be happy. I know I am. It's all good. And then, yeah, there's the first weld we made. All right. Well, this is a pretty radical thing to do where you cut the whole boss out and then replace it. Um, it's not easy. It's, it's pretty fucking hard unless you got a line hone and bore machine to fuck with these bosses. I don't suggest a beginner take this job. I've done a lot of these. Uh, yeah, it came out pretty fucking good. The uh, owner of the machine should be able to get this thing back into service, get back to rocking and rolling and using this thing. And yeah, that was the whole goal. And so I was gonna leave it for them to assemble, but I decided let me assemble it just in case. Everything went together pretty smooth. 
Uh, the only problem is that the idiots at Kubota gave me the wrong size shims for the center dog bone pin. So I just gotta leave them a little note, letting them know they need to get some new shims, pull that center dog bone pin out. Otherwise, everything's greased up. It looks good. It works good. Let me show you. Guys, I'm Melt Metal Anthony. If you like what you saw here today, like, subscribe, share. Do the whole nine for your boy, okay? These jobs are hard as fuck to film for you. But anyway, keep dragging rod, keep pushing me, keep doing what you do, and I will catch you on the next one, motherfucker.